over institutionalized. It's it's so different to how it was perhaps in the past, where it was more a kind of a grassroots phenomenon, the linking exactly. of of minds of even of souls for that matter. Basically, when you find it, you know because it feels right. There's yes. something to do with when you really do come across the truth, you feel that it is exactly. the truth. When people are in each other's presence, of course, there is this very um, strong, let's say, spiritual connection, electromagnetic, if you want to call it that, yes. um, even a quantum level, whereby if you were connected virtually, you wouldn't have that connection anymore. But there are a lot of people who say that you can still maintain that connection. Yes even across the computer screen or whatever. Yeah. Because of the quantum field, actually, which, yes. of course, is, is everywhere and nowhere at the same time. Delocated. It's delocated. So if you're just in contact with another human being, it doesn't even matter what the location is exactly. in, in space-time. Yeah. Confronting the issue of this very stagnated approach to art, in which you need always an institution or somebody to open space for you to actually be able to create. We've lost a sense of responsibility socially as well, but this is, I mean, art is everywhere. We are all somehow creators of our reality. And yeah. Truth happens also because of that, you know, yeah. so that was kind of our need. I think Switzerland is also a particular case in that sense, because this is also, you know, it's, it's perhaps an extreme case of institution, institutionalization of art. How do we put art back in the center of, of the social environment? The, the less amount of time you need to use or you need to be on a virtual instrument, the more time you have to do something else, right? Mm. So it's also creating space. Is an instrument something which is only you use only to find solutions or resolve something? Or is it also something that you use to create, to provide for something new, to open something which is non-existent yet? For example, when I teach, especially when it's people on a very high level, um, one of the questions I ask my student is, what is more important, the means, as in the instrument or the tools, or the job that you want to do? What comes first? The creation, mm -hmm. if something exists within you that you want to bring forward into this space-time realm and therefore transmit it, mm -hmm. give it to others, you have to then develop the means to do it. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm totally against the opposite idea where you create tools and then you ask yourself, now well, I wonder what, what I can build with these tools, yes? Um, for me that is such a, a counterintuitive yes. idea. Yes. But we live in a world where that's actually occurring on a daily basis. Yes. People are inventing new ways of doing things and they're not sure what actually to do with yes. these things. The intention is, is also important. It reminds me of what um, the late Sir Roger Scruton said. Mm -hmm. um, he was uh, an English philosopher um, and very conservative at the same time and spoke wonderfully about the arts. A bit like uh, kind of English version of Vittorio Sgarbi mm. in Italy. So, you know, incredibly artistically um, cultured and a great philosopher at the same time. And he said, we've developed the means to communicate everything everywhere, and yet we've lost the ability to decide what to communicate. As in, we have all the means, but nothing more to communicate. So you're actually basically expressing the same concept, that mm -hmm. you have to have something. Exactly creative and artistic that you want to communicate. Exactly. There's a need. And then find the instruments. Yes. If they're there, even yes. better. There's two things. One is intention, dialogue, research, mm -hmm. travel. And then on the other side, there's availability. Sharing resources. We're talking about process in the social texture. How does that move? How do we put back, you know, not a product-oriented way of dealing with things, but more of what is this creative process about? Each individual being responsible. Mm -hmm. um, because I'm very much against this um, managerial world that we live in, where I mean everything is now managed. You know, mm. in fact, managing things becomes more important than the things that are being managed. Yeah. That it's taking our interaction with the real world out of our hands somehow. The intensity of uh, the presence of AI 
in all levels of decisions, media decisions, information, uh, political decisions, and it tends to be erratic. Um, I'm, let's say, saddened by many or maybe most of the trends of today. It's not a necessity. It, it must be um, must be the consequence of some kind of strategy. And I think I, I believe actually that there must be millions upon millions of people who are who want to create a a more natural um, ecosystem yes. of human interaction. We can still, of course, exploit the technology. Definitely, it's there. We should there. Leave. But we always have to be using the tools for our own purposes. Yes. We can't let the tools create some kind of virtual purpose yes. within ourselves, which is what's happening to, to, to many young people. I have to ask the right questions yes. in the first place. So that's the thing here. And that's the thing. Asking the right questions. Something that you feel is happening, something that you understand. Yeah. I suppose it's, it's a form of growing up. Um, because every, every step in the growing up process is a step um, towards, I suppose, denying what you trusted in before and having to trust in something that is further developed and obviously more complicated. I, mm -hmm. I mean, I personally have always had a problem with um, negotiating through life in terms of encounters with people on the basis that half of them might actually be lying most of the time. Yeah, that's a personal problem I have. I have this ridiculously naive idea that one should trust what people say. Mm -hmm. And probably since the year 2001, that has completely flipped over. My approach towards Humanity has completely transformed. Mm -hmm. Of course, one accepts on a, on a smaller scale, on a, on a kind of microcosmic scale in terms of direct interactions with people. Yeah. That some people may be telling the truth and others may be lying, and, or some of the time and not all of the time. But what I have come to realize in the last 20 or 21 years is that there is some seriously massive global yes. cosmic lying going on under our noses. Yes. And that's a huge um, burden for any human being to take on himself. And many people don't have the courage to, to go there, to take that on board. Your ecosystem idea, your instrument idea, mm -hmm. is going to help that side mm -hmm. of things as well. Mm -hmm. If we can call it a liminal time of moment right. change. Yeah. I call it the Great Awakening. Great Awakening. Yeah. I think many others. Structures do. fall, others oh, yes. change. That's why I'm basically optimistic about yeah. things. And we need to keep our hearts open to make sure things, you know, ourselves, each one of us, you know, goes through this in an open hearted way. I know, because one, of course, is going up and down yeah. um, in terms of morale. It changes on, on a not only on a daily basis, but sometimes on an hourly basis. Yes. Again, analyzing the, the news or the data that is being fed to us or that we are looking for, I'm sure that there's a lot of um, misinformation and disinformation being promulgated. I haven't changed, but my attitude has changed. Yeah. Um, and I hope that it's a positive change. Well, it is. Yeah. And I'm happy that we had this chance <laughs> to see each other again for all these years and having this moment, which is charged of feeling and emotion and uh, vitality. So thank you, Rovka. Thank you for taking the time to come over. And this is what uh, we need mm -hmm. also. You know, mm -hmm. These small moments that ripple. Oh, yeah. yeah. But once you start the ripple. <laughs>